Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week, we're in Panama to celebrate the landmark 100th rollout of Shuttle Time. And we head over to Hamburg, Germany to report on how the UN Youth Leadership Program is using badminton as a catalyst for change. Shuttle Time. VWF's flagship grassroots program has grown in leaps and bounds around the world since 2012. With its tagline, because we want every child to have a chance to play badminton, Shuttle Time has indeed created opportunities for the young. Previously on this show, we've showcased how this initiative has made its way into people's lives in numerous countries. This week, Badminton Unlimited celebrates a landmark. After touching 17 nations in Africa, 25 in Asia, 27 in Europe, 8 in Oceania, and 23 in the Pan America region, Shuttle Time recently celebrated its 100th rollout in Panama. Shuttle Time is number 100 in Panama. Felicitaciones, Shuttle Time. Congratulations, Badminton World Federation, for 100 Shuttle Time. Our cameras were in the Central American country to report on the latest implementation of the highly successful program. As the organization responsible for it, BWF are pleased with how shuttle time has been received over the years. It was uh, something that you really wished for, that uh, you could achieve 100, but you also thought that that would be almost impossible. But uh, there has been uh, great, great support, first of all, for the programs. Uh, reaching a hundred countries, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, it's exceeded every expectation. Um, we had a goal at one stage to, within the first four years, to reach 40 to 50 implementations and now going to a hundred just shows that it's been an incredible success that have been received extremely well by our members and many other stakeholders around the world. While the focal point of shuttle time is about children trying their hand at the sport, BWF has been quick to recognize the need to involve various stakeholders within the project. The key for us has been going in and talking to key stakeholders in each country before we actually implement. So it's really important for us, first of all, with our member association to, to identify who the key stakeholders are in that country regarding sport and more specifically school sport. Without the support of the local stakeholders, most of our federations are not big enough to create a sustainable project by themselves. So, and where we can help is to get those stakeholders on side. This cooperation across various organizations couldn't be better illustrated than in Panama. The country's sporting administrators are excited about the future of badminton here and were on hand to support Panama Badminton Union's efforts. We directly support the Panama Badminton Union's activities. They have brought in a new management team in the last year and now we are offering them our unconditional support. We thought they needed to be a bit more aggressive in their promotional efforts to popularize badminton in our country. That's why we are helping them with that. Growth is the most important thing, but we need the rest of the authorities here in this country to assist and support us. Things like helping us to make sure badminton is being tried out and played almost everywhere, be it in any area, school and indoor halls in the country. With such progress, we can develop better players who are equipped to play on the international stage. Central to unleashing badminton's potential in Panama is, of course, shuttle time. The 100th implementation of the program saw participants have a great time. Shuttle time was very important for me today. The classes conducted were very motivating and inspiring. All of us had good access to the coach, and the communication between us was just as good as well. In these two days, we learned a lot about the game. So it was nice 
to be able to put into practice all that we have picked up during the training sessions. Today we learned things that we didn't know, like how to hold the racket properly and the importance of both posture and positioning. I think the Shuttle Time program implemented by the Badminton World Federation has been a very important tool for countries that need to have a plan on how to start teaching the sport to beginners. It gives correct and precise instructions. These guidelines are crucial for instructors to be able to then teach the right skills for these countries starting up. But even as shuttle time continues to boost uptake of the sport globally, BWF has plans in place for both sustaining and renewing interest in the sport. And one of those ways forward is capitalising on mobile technology. We think by the end of the year we'll get to 120, but that's not really the story. We have to make sure that the first 50 are sustainable, obviously and to go back, to talk to them, to see what the needs are. We're doing a continual analysis process of what's working, what's not working. Sharing good practice between the different countries is really important. But we're also looking at how we can add to the resources. So, for example, uh, by the end of March, we'll have the Shuttle Time app online in all, with all the different language versions. So people will be able to download the resources and also some other teaching hints. Some new information will be available through the app. Fun, accessible and engaging, the rising popularity of shuttle time is showing no signs of slowing down. Panama may be its 100th stop, but we're sure this wonderful initiative is just warming up for many more. Honda Civic. Yeah, Honda Accord, 1987, that was. Okay, Waihee Beach family holiday Beach. probably. Now you're making me think. <laughs> uh, what's that, a bracelet of mine? To, to my girlfriend? Yeah. Yours? Uh, We've got a few. I wouldn't know what the first was, to be honest. <laughs> Um, we'll go with a box of chocolates, which is probably the first one. <laughs> North Island Championships in the mixed doubles. Yeah, under, under 18 men's doubles, nationals. As a waitress at Pizza Hut. As a merchandiser for Coca-Cola. Okay. Ten dollars an hour? <laughs> yeah, not much more. I'll go with twelve. But... <laughs> <laughs> Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want you to name the first and only women singles player from Indonesia to win at the All England Open Badminton Championships. We give you the answer after the break. When we return, we're in Penang, Malaysia to talk to Tay Peng Huat, the man who discovered and taught Lee Chong Wei. Before the break, we asked you to name the first and only women singles player from Indonesia to win at the All England Open Badminton Championships. The answer is Susi Susanti. The Tasik Malaya native is one of Indonesia's badminton greats and was the most dominant women's singles player in the early 90s. In 1990, Susanti defeated China's Huang Hua to become the first All England women's singles champion from Indonesia. She went on to collect three more titles in 1991, 93 and 94. She remains the only women's singles player from her country to win at the prestigious All England Open. 
Sunday early morning in Barapit, a small town in Bukit Murtajam, Penang, Malaysia. Whilst all around, life is just beginning to stir, a badminton lesson is already in session. This elderly man might not be a familiar face to many, but he once coached one of the best players in the modern game. He would make us train very hard because as youngsters we were very cheeky. We would go against him and try to find ways to get out of training. Taeping Huat coached in Malaysia's Lee Chong Wei during his formative years. Now 80, Tae taught him the nuances of badminton, setting Lee up for better things to come. Whatever I taught him, he learned it well. If I show him a movement in the morning, he will use it later in the evening during a match of practice. That was why his progress was so fast. Tae himself was a player in Penang in the 1950s and 60s and excelled in several local tournaments. There were no coaches where he was from, but he learned the game on his own. He even invented and perfected his own deceptive moves to outwit his opponents. I was a good player in Bukit Matajam. I was very tricky with my shots and beat a lot of players 15 love. Some of the players asked me to teach them. That was when I started coaching at 18. When Badminton Unlimited visited Tay, he was happy to show us some of his moves. One of the trick shots he is well known for is the triple motion movement, a deceptive move used to deceive the opponent. Moving twice and you stop and move. Moving three step. One, two, three. Stop. Move. Ho. Three step one is very good. Ah, but very hard to learn. Tay did not charge any fees when he first started his class some 60 years ago, as he was happy to impart his knowledge to those who were willing to learn. Soon, parents who knew him began to bring their children, and the number of trainees kept growing. After I stopped working, I had to charge for my classes. For parents who can't afford, they will request not to pay fees. My daughter said, you don't have to accept any fees or just accept whatever the parents can afford. If you need money, just ask from me. <laughs> One student who made him a household name in Malaysia was Lee Chong Wei. Lee was only 10 when Tay, who was in his late 50s then, spotted him and recognized his raw talent. But it took two years for Tay to get the prodigy under his wing. <laughs> He was very agile. His movement was so lively. He was a very active child, nimble and a natural. My father ran a business, so he could not fetch me to and from my training. The coach offered to send me home after my training. I made a bet with his father. If by three months you don't see any results, then he can leave. I had to make a bet. If not, he will not relent. <laughs> Lee was 12 when he came under Tay's guardianship. Two months later, he started winning titles. Although Lee left for the capital, Kuala Lumpur, to train with the national team, he continued to keep in touch with his mentor. He still does now. <laughs> He always shares his thoughts and ideas with me over the phone. Whenever his students are playing, he will sit by the TV and observe our game as well as our opponent's game. He will analyze the game and give us feedback. Li Chongwei was not his only protege. Another is former women's doubles world number two, Chin Yi Hui, who is currently Malaysia's mixed doubles coach. Tay was also instrumental in laying the foundation for women's singles 2015 World Junior Champion, Go Jin Wei. He is fair to all. He imparts the same set of skills and knowledge to every student. He is not biased and will not just focus on students who are more talented. For his contribution to sport and badminton, Tay was awarded Best Coach by the Penang State Sports Council in 2005. A taskmaster on court, the octogenarian has made it his lifelong mission to bring out the best in his students. As long as you're willing to learn, I'm willing to teach you. 
even if it is 50 times a month. For an average child, at least 35 to 40 times. You train till you master the skills, just like Chong Wei. As morning turned to noon, we took our leave of Tay as he continued to nurture the future of Malaysian badminton. Badminton Unlimited wishes Tay Peng Huat all the best. Without him, I wouldn't have made it. He's not young anymore, but he still contributes by coaching children. So I feel very grateful to him. I hope he can continue to contribute to Malaysian badminton and stays healthy for many years to come. I, I hope to, to continue. I don't want to stop also. I can coach, I still continue. <laughs> The Barclay Card Arena opened its doors once again when it hosted the prestigious Yonex All England Open last weekend. Finals day started off with an all China affair as five time winner Lin Dan faced compatriot Tian Ho Wei in the men's singles. World number eight Tian had done well to get this far, but against the man who had defeated him in all six previous encounters, Tian knew he needed his A game to stand any chance. But the golf in class was too apparent after 45 minutes of play. The Olympic champion Lin defeating his fellow countrymen in straight games 21-9, 21-10. China's Tang Yuanting and Yu Yang were up next as they took on Japanese pair Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi in the women's doubles final. After missing out on January's Victor Far East Malaysia Masters title to their opponents, Tang and Yu were keen to exact some revenge. However, Matsutomo and Takahashi stood up best once again. The world number three pair walked away with the win after two games. Final score, 21-10, 21-12. The mixed doubles final saw Indonesia's Praveen Jordan and Debbie Susanto taking on Denmark's Joachim Fischer-Nielsen and Christina Pedersen. After upsetting defending champions Tang Nan and Zhao Yunlei in the semi-final, Jordan and Susanto's confidence was on a high going into this contest. With the Indonesian duo on song right from the start, the Danes simply couldn't keep up. The Southeast Asians finally clinched their first ever World Super Series title in straight games, 21-12, 21-17 the final score. Japan's women's single star Nozomi Okuhara stepped out on court next as she prepared for the challenge from China's Wang Shixian. Okuhara passed a stiff test against two-time world champion Carolina Marin the day before and was looking to repeat that form against the world number five, Wang. The 21-year-old Japanese managed to clinch the first game only for her Chinese opponent to level the score in the next. The rubber could have gone to either player, but in the end, it was Okuhara who prevailed. Final score, 21-11, 16-21, 21-19. The concluding men's doubles final saw Russia's top pair, Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozanov, going up against Japan's Hiroyuki Endo and Kenichi Hayakawa. Runners-up twice in 2013 and 2014, Endo and Hayakawa were hoping their luck would change this time round. But it was to be another ill-fated outing for the Japanese men, as Ivanov and Sozanov recovered from a slow start to win their first ever major title on the circuit. 21-23, 21-18, 21-16 read the final score. After the break, find out how badminton is being used to enrich the lives of disadvantaged youth. In today's troubled world, sports' ability to unite people from a wide variety of backgrounds has never been more important. The sport of badminton is keen to play its part developing a number of initiatives to help those in need. One such project is the partnership between the Badminton World Federation and the United Nations Office on Sport for Development and Peace 
to enhance youth development at the grassroots level. The Federation is now actively delivering their shuttle time course at four UN youth leadership camps. The goal is for these emerging leaders and role models to go on and teach disadvantaged youths how to use sport to bring about transformation in their communities. These projects are needed in places like Germany, where refugees escaping troubled times have, for long, sought sanctuary. The participants we have here in Hamburg, uh, there are 31. We have uh, six refugees that are currently living in Germany. We have uh, Germans who are working uh, with sport organizations. Uh, we have uh, people from Serbia, uh, Africa, South America, uh, Eastern Europe, and also the Middle East. The refugees that we have here, they have been chosen based on their performance uh, within their, their refugee settlements at the moment, and they have shown potential to be youth leaders within their communities. So we kind of uh, highlighted that there, uh, there is potential for them to go into using sport for development, and we look to kind of educate them with as much uh, opportunities as we can give them here in the hope that when they return either to their communities here in Germany or when, if they ever return home, that they're able to use sport as a tool for development and education. There will be people who believe that education should be the priority when working with refugees and that sport is a relatively frivolous pursuit. However, former Jordanian national badminton player Dima Arda, who works as a volunteer at refugee camps, believes that any initiative that offers a means of escape is vital in communities where hope is a precious commodity. Sport is a great tool that uh, everyone can use. Sport is a language that everyone can speak. So no matter where you are, no matter what are the circumstances around you, you can play sport. So it, it unites people. We are using sports as a tool to develop their skills, not only to put them inside the classroom and tell them like you gonna you have to do one two three because it's for too boring for people they lost hope when I say refugee they lost hope everyone can can play sports so everyone will participate with us at the same time to uh, educate them and just to give them a little bit of a, of a hope like for, for a better future if you're bringing any sport to these areas uh, and providing a platform where uh, communities can mix and come together and play sport, then at the end of the day, I believe that they will leave the court with a smile on their face. One of the most creative and enjoyable tasks during the Shuttle Time Youth Leadership Camp in Hamburg was learning how to create badminton equipment using everyday household materials such as string, cardboard and bottles. This is particularly useful when promoting badminton in poor communities, and it's a key part of Shuttle Time's goal to make the sport accessible to all. I think there are three factors that really contribute to Shuttle Time being successful. The first is training people in country um, so that they have the skills and they have a sustainable training package. Second thing, very importantly, for some countries, they just don't have enough equipment. So by providing them with equipment, they're encouraged to carry on with their development. And thirdly, you need an infrastructure. So it's really important to link to ministries, health, education, sport, as well as national Olympic committees. So they've got in-country uh, provision of support when they go back and start their work. Another of Shuttle Time's aims is to make badminton one of the most popular sports for school kids worldwide, no matter what their gender, ability or disability. For some of them, it's to go back and to try and introduce things. For the others, it's to explore the possibilities of linking with their national federation to see what's already happening in country and see if they can add value to that. And for some, it's just been a very nice experience to learn a new sport. Before we go, let's see how the international circuit looks as we check out our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Get connected with us. Log on to these websites for videos and photos and get the latest news and information on all things badminton. 
and visit our YouTube channel, badmintonworld.tv, for tournament highlights and past matches to savor, as well as all episodes of Badminton Unlimited. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. Next week, we're in Southeast Asia to catch up with Malaysia's top mixed doubles duo, Chang Peng Soon and Go Yu Ying. See you next week!